Good morning. Welcome back. Today I thought I would take you on a little tour of my uh, workspace, little behind the scenes studio tour and a little brief uh, altar tour as you can see over my shoulder here um, is where kind of my main my main altar space and uh, my main helper there Lilith. So let me turn around and show you what's going on over here. Well, actually, let's start the tour. I'm going to come back over here to my stairs. These are the stairs from my front door and the upstairs of my house. And I'm going to turn the camera around. Ooh, there's some mess. I'm not going to lie. I didn't clean up for y'all. Um, so there's a little, there's a few things lying around, sitting around. And, um, a kitten start here so as you come down the stairs we'll go back there in a minute you come down into my main room to the left we're going to go around clockwise so that you can see everything in a clockwise motion and we'll get to see what Lilith is getting into over there this is my sewing center it's pulled away from the wall because I had the um, extension up in the back so my sewing machine my sewing table and uh, some little inspirations, some artwork, and things from friends and children and whatnot. Just <laughs> that used to be an altar space on that shelf above there. And then a certain little black and white kitten decided she liked to sit there when I was working and everything got knocked off. So uh, it's now empty. And as you can maybe see better from an angle. Uh, it's at an angle. And her weight, she got too big for it. And I just need to repair it or move it or do something and it hasn't happened. So then we get over here toward, and these are some of my drums. This deer skull is a creation, well, it's a creation of Mother Nature's originally and then embellished by my youngest daughter. And uh, she had it in her room for a long time, had it in college with her and Decided it didn't meet, didn't fit her aesthetic anymore. And I put it up here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Uh, and I think it works really well. There's my new baron. I discovered I was pronouncing the name of that drum incorrectly. Not Bodrin, but baron. And the other two drums up here are, um, I'm trying to remember, this is my elk skin drum and my deer skin drum with the... Uh, feathers on it. Those are both handmade by me. And then we're going to come down here. Uh, this copper uh, moon faces mobile or wall hanging is from a local artist. It was a gift from my husband. Um, tucked behind here is a project <laughs> that I started. I made, bring her down here. Oops, maybe I will put that are falling over. That's the sample that I made. Uh, I made this for my oldest daughter who just moved into her first house. And we have a, as most, I think, people of her generation, um, big link with Harry Potter. And uh, so the pages on the back here are Mod Podge pages from a Harry Potter book. And um, the one I made her turned out differently than this one, but this was my practice because I can see some mistakes that I made and things I don't like about it, so I had to redo it. Um, okay, so now we're moving toward my main altar. That piece of artwork is called Night in the Forest, and I love it. I don't remember the artist's name. I found it on Etsy years and years and years ago. I don't think it's even, I don't see a date on it right now, maybe on the back. Um, I don't know if she's still on Etsy. If I can find uh, a look for a link, and if I can, I'll link it in, in the show notes in the description. Uh, just some little, this is another drum. This is my water drum, my ocean drum. It has, um, it's really loud. It's filled with like um, BBs, and it makes a wonderful ocean wave sound. I'm not going to go through every little item on my altar because we'll be here all day. Uh, this is a little special gift. It's a book, a Mother's Day gift for my daughter. And if I can find it real quick, I'm going to show you my favorite. So 2015. So I've had this for a while. 
Um, she just <laughs> she filled it with little drawings, which I loved. And if I can find the main drawing that I really love, mm, I'm not gonna find it right offhand. I need to go back through this sometime. It, it, it's one of those things you go through and you're feeling a little shitty. Oh, there it is. I love the way we laugh, the jokes we share, the silly things we do. And these are some of my favorites. And she just drew, drew, drew me a picture of a bear with shark arms. And um, there's a story behind it. Um, we won't go into it now, but it just brings me joy. So we'll go on the top shelf, I think, of my um, altar space. And the kitten is back. You had some stuff you knocked off. What'd you do with it, kitten? There must be somebody outside the window she's uh, watching. So I have, like, just little things. Um, here's another friend and artist and witch, Cat and Crow Apothecary, Heather. Uh, she's here in Chattanooga. Well, she's actually in Georgia. Her products are wonderful. I'll link her in the descriptions. Hi, Lily Bell. Um, I have a lot of stones, a lot of rocks, a lot of crystals. This is one of my favorite. It's a huge Petoskey stone. It looks like a lump of gray nothing uh, when it's here dry, but when it's wet, you can see that it's a big Petoskey stone from Lake, the shores of Lake Michigan. Um, another uh, Etsy store that I will link is my daughter's Etsy store. She makes these adorable pots. This is one of her, her first um, ones that she made and gave it to me for Christmas with all these eyeballs. Um, a podcast I listen to when it's not original to the podcast, but it's what makes me think of it. The saying is when you look into the darkness, sometimes the darkness looks back. Um, and, uh, that's what this reminds me of. And I love it. This, oh, you're not gonna be able to see it. I'm going to have to move it. Oh boy, you're heavy. Can you see? It's a, it is a large piece of Labradorite. Oh, there you can see the blue. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That is kind of the backstop of my main altar here. I love Labradorite. Um, again, I won't. These are my pendulums where they can sit and get both sun and moon energy in front of this window. A little Durga energy. Green man. And I, if it has a tree on it, I, it's mine pretty much. Uh, this little heart. Riku Heart, the tree, this gal, she, um, like many of us, as we leave our mother stage of life into our crone stage of life, have some battle scars um, and have been put back together. And I almost threw her away when she fell. Um, I can't even blame Lilith for that one. It was before Lilith fell off a shelf and broke. And then I decided, no, nope, she's going to get repaired this i have a lot of things for my daughter my youngest daughter on my um altar we share a lot of same similarities and tastes this is something she made in high school art class and it is um one of her she doesn't do a lot of pottery and uh but it's the moon phases all the way around this jug and uh I like to watch things like Time Team and other... I used to try to turn it. I should turn it here to the full moon. It's full moon today. Uh, every, you know, every week or so. So it was the proper moon phase was sticking out. But I don't always remember to do that. Um, I love to watch Time Team and other, like, archaeology and history shows. And I want my ashes buried in that someday. So... Somebody will dig it up hundreds and hundreds of years from now and go, oh, this must have been ritual, ritualistic. Um, if you watch Time Team, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, this mug I picked up at a um, herbal conference, and I handmade, hand-thrown uh, mug. It has a, not a used tea bag in it. I can't, it was, I don't know what that tea bag's in there for. But I love it. I love that goddess symbol. Trees and goddess symbols are mod jam. This incense that's burning here is from Flint Candle Company. This one was rose, hip, and honey. So it's a nice little light fragrance. Little jars of random, <laughs> random herbs. Because what witch doesn't have little jars of random herbs? 
uh, some smoking herbs in my little pipe. Some, this is one of my cedar. This is my big Mama Jamba cedar uh, saving stick, saving for special. This corner are my goddesses and my water elements, a little bit of both. Um, I'm a Pisces, so anything with mermaids and fish, Pisces water. This is a vision of a guide who came to me in a journey. Um, and this cal is from my other daughter. These are my daughters, aren't they beautiful? These were from a number of years ago on a trip to Europe. Um, when she was a little, little girl, she used to sit up at night and draw pictures and draw these little ladies. And I converted one of her drawings into a three-dimensional fabric sculpture. Um, that was fun. So a big jug of moon water. Um, that was from last Samhain's full super moon. And um, I need to use it a little bit more. <coughs> this mask I also found in my daughter's art stuff uh, after she came home from college. And I thought, well, that's really too pretty to just have in a box. So I need to maybe figure out a way to fix it so it doesn't hang so wobbly, but I do love it. Um, because masks are also an uh, element of my practice, not wearing them, but working with them. My besom or uh, broom, this has to be hung up. Uh, well, Lilith still gets at it, but this was a gift from my, my sister, my middle sister, a number of years ago. I used to hang over a door at my old house. Um, and it hangs here. It is uh, handmade. I want to say Amish or Mennonite or something. I can't remember who, where exactly she got it, but that is a grapevine, um, handle and corn broom. It's beautiful. This, uh, I work with bear energy and mama bear is <laughs> definitely one of my animal guides. And I love that she has these three baby cubs, and when I bought it, I did not notice this little cub. I thought that was part of this guy, or I don't know. And there's so many, so much symbols. There's a fish here. There is a tree of life here. Um, there are mastodons and other Neolithic um, cave painting type elements here. And I got this in, oh, well, back to the third little guy. I did notice he was there. And my story includes my two daughters, and I lost a child. Uh, I miscarried. Um, and I always um, think of her as my third daughter, and her name was going to be Grace. So I carry Grace with me everywhere I go. And uh, so it was interesting that when I bought this, I didn't even notice that little bear there until I got her hung up. Uh, you know, put it in my luggage. I bought it in Wales and uh, on a retreat with friends. And um, so anyway, that's the bear. This is my tree corner. Because like I've said before, tree of life, trees in general. I actually have this journal that I picked up uh, from a street vendor artist in Portugal. Oh, I miss traveling. <laughs> And uh, this, I can't remember where I got this, but usually when I travel, I try to buy some small, something that fits easily into my luggage, piece of art from a local artist or something that I can bring home and remember. Of course, I don't, now I don't remember where I got this one, but it says a sunset walk of magic light. I am this moment. I am this moment. I am this moment. And I, yeah. Uh, I unplugged this tree the other day. It was a gift for my husband, and I haven't, it doesn't reach. I moved the out, I moved the plug, and I can't get it to reach now, so I have to fix that. This box, um, I can open it. I guess I can open it. This is my ancestor altar, and I made it in such a way with this box so that I can keep it closed, and then I can open it and work with my ancestors when I want to work with my ancestors. And it was part of a, um, class, online class that I took. So there are my beloved grandparents, Charlie and Lilas. And I won't go into all the details. It's got my Scottish plaid in the back. Um, 
This is an ancestor blessing tincture that I bought at a retreat. And all of these have significance. I won't go into it. Maybe someday I'll do a, something about my ancestor work. Um, but that's not for today. So let me go back in here. I uh, recently bought this book at the Chattanooga, uh, I want to say flea market. It's not a flea market. Chattanooga Sunday market from Paulina. And I uh, love this book. Maybe I'll do a whole post on it. But I love her work. And I got to meet her in person for once. We have mutual friends, but we'd never met in person. And it's signed, and it's lovely. Um, <laughs> my basket of rocks. These used to be sorted into little each little box and had its own thing in a drawer. And uh, I put them in this basket one time to take them out for the full moon. And they never got sorted back into their respective boxes. And I kind of I kind of like it. Now, I don't shuffle through them because I don't want the polished ones to get roughed up by the rough ones. Um, but when I make a, here is my grid, uh, my crystal grid, and it needs to be refreshed and redone. Oh yeah, that's what the kitten was playing with. That little chip came from somewhere up here. Um, when it's time to refresh, which it is, but I'm not gonna do it right now, I'll put, set all these aside um, where they live, and then I'll just kind of instinctively I'll ground myself and think of what I want to manifest, what kind of energy, maybe a protective grid, maybe a manifesting grid, maybe a drawing grid. I don't know, you know, whatever it might be. And I kind of instinctively pick the stones from here, just kind of reach in, look at each of them. Some of them, I know their properties, you know, I know, um, you know, and some of them, I don't even remember what they, what they are. <laughs> Or I have to look them up. I have to, you know, because um, I think that's lepidolite, lepidolite. I'm not sure. But tiger's eye, you know, if I need some Durga energy, some some tiger little um, sacral strength, uh, chakra strength, I'll grab a tiger's eye and put that in there, you know, that kind of thing. So, um and I do have some guidebooks and things that I can refer to, but I'd like to do it instinctively. Quite often, I will just do it, and then I'll get out my guidebook and say, okay, well, I used Amazonite, and I used Citri. Now, again, if I'm, you know, doing a money spell, I'm going to grab my Citri. <coughs> but also, if I'm working with my solar plexus, I'm going to grab Citri. So, this little guy... It's just a little teapot warmer, and if, you know, on a cold winter's day, I will bring my little two-cup teacup teapot down here and keep it warm on there. So this, oh, let's talk about my wand. I don't do a lot of ritual, and I'll do a video here soon, kind of introducing me in, in the kind of practice that I do. But I love this. I got this wand when I was with my sisters up in, Na we were, went visit, uh, met in Nashville, and this is... A bobbin from a cotton mill is my understanding and this is a crystal chandelier point from you know I don't even think it's crystal I don't even think it's glass I think it's plastic but hey it is in there if it ever falls out um, you know maybe I'll find the right true crystal point to put in there or um, you know something and glue it in there but it looks like it's pretty well glued in there so um, I love the shade of green. Um, I, my sisters and I are stitch witches, you know, fabric and yarn and uh, any kind of fiber. So having this cotton mill relation, it just spoke to me. Of course, I've shown this box. It's my, one of my more free, recent acquisitions, and I can't get it open with one hand. So there is a deck of cards in here. Um, I just liked it, bought it. This, again, was a artist-made piece that I bought at an art fair somewhere. <laughs> I don't recall now where. And I keep all of my um, seining or smudge bundles in it because it's pretty. And um, it's all my seining herbs, my sweet grass, mugwort. I think this is a mugwort as well. There's a little bit of sage in there and some uh, different cedar than my cedar. And I don't know why that other cedar's over there, but it is. 
And then, of course, my um, abalone shell and stand. And this little guy, this is Santa Claus. Everybody should have Santa, Santa all year long. Now, I don't like to blow out my candles. I like to snuff them out. And I had this Christmas, and he's covered with wax. Candle snuffer, somebody gave me, you know, Santa Claus on it. And I'm like, well, it does the job, even though it's not the right season. So <clears throat> I keep him here. My cauldron, um, which you can see I do burning spells in, if you can see in there. It needs to be taken out and, and buried or whatever. It's a cast iron cauldron. I found that in Ill Western Illinois. It's some little uh, antique store. And I love it. I mean, I think I paid, oh, if I paid 10 bucks for it, then that was probably generous. I don't think I even paid that much. A couple candles. This again, um, I love this company, Flint Candle Company. It's from my home state of Michigan. And this one I had burning the other day, Incense and Chai. Mm. It smelled like a winter's day at the yoga studio, I guess is the best. Like you got a hot cup of chai and you got the incense going. And then this one is tobacco and cedar, which I said before. This reminds me of my grandfather. And then these cubicles down here are kind of a mess right now. Normally, uh, I have my Tibetan bowls in here, but they are at the yoga studio where I teach. And if they're so heavy, it's easier to just leave them there than carry them back and forth. So these different bins hold different things, trying to keep it neat. This is my latest stack of latest acquired books. So I'm going to kind of keep them there where I will be apt to grab one and read them. So that is that area. <laughs> this I, I sit on this day bed every day. It's a little rumpled and it needs a new a new cover. Um, as you can see, this is where I sit and do my morning card readings. It's also where I sit and work on my computer. Um, I don't have a desk, I mean, other than my sewing machine behind me. This was, uh, I bought these, this, and bought versions for my sisters as well. This is my daily um, tarot journal from Ritual Planner. I didn't get it until the end of January, so the beginning of January is not filled out, but it has an op a place to put in your full birth chart and your uh, draw for the year, all 12 months, and write it all out. And then your daily, you have a monthly spread, and then you have a daily spread. So in their three card pulls, and, and so I've been, it's nice because I've, I've really, it's gotten me to um, focus on my tarot practice much more um, regularly than I used to. And I'm learning tarot much better now because I use it every day. So my bookshelves, we do not have time for me to go through everything on the bookshelves. A couple highlights. These are waiting for new frames. These are from Paulina as well. Uh, the, the image from the cover of her book and then this little magical black cat um yeah someday we'll do a bookshelf tour but as you can see that would take a little bit of time um or a lot of time but there's a mixture of lots of books that need to be sorted and organized and uh tchotchkes and things that just part of my practice or gifts or what have you artwork up here uh, a basket of mugwort because i feel like i'm mug baskets of mugwort everywhere in my house little ganesha Got him when we were trying to sell our old house because there were a lot of obstacles that needed to get moved out of the way when we moved from Chicago to here. So, so this is a workspace. My cutting table, folding cutting table. Um, it gets a lot of use for a lot of things right now. This is um, another video coming up. I've been dyeing fabric. Some winners, some losers. We'll get into that later. This cabinet, I don't know if I've showed this cabinet before. Um, this was, it also has little mini altars. It's, it's on the west wall, so it has a lot of water-based things up here in jars and things I'm trying to keep out of Lilith's way. I made that candle. I love it, but it's too hard to make more for other people. Sorry. But this was an old TV cabinet, and I have painted it and converted it into my Cricut and printer holder 
So, and then over here, uh, I have my ironing board because I got to iron that fabric set up. Kind of my planning center. It is a work in progress. And I'm going to very briefly, only because I love you, I'm going to share my back room with me, with you. It's kind of a real mess right now because I was dyeing fabric back here yesterday. And um, so I got a lot of things bundled around. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come in here and get this thing all set up before I flip the camera so you can see. Of course, you can see the mess over my shoulder. So I guess that didn't really work. Here. This little corner was where my workstation used to be. I guess it still is. So again, another miscellaneous bookshelf full of miscellaneous tools and things. This work table... This is kind of my messy work table, uh, either when I want to sit down at a table and work um, or when I'm doing things like fabric dyeing or plant work, you know, stuff that I don't want to get, uh, keep it separate from the other workspace out there where it could get on something or make a mess. So yeah, my buckets of, or not buckets, bottles of dye and whatnot. I'm going to do some more fabric dyeing today. This is poor Minerva. She used to live out with the rest of us, but she uh, has been relegated to the back room and is wearing a collar of a quilting frame. Um, she is not set for my measurements, but I got her from a neighbor back in Illinois, found her in his attic, and uh, she's pretty cool. So she used to live in my living room. I used to put her by like the windows so that when people like pulled in the driveway, they thought someone was standing there. Back there is uh, Bertha. That is my body double, but I haven't made any clothes in a while. So she's, Bertha's living in the back. Uh, yeah, this is where the mess starts and I'm not going to linger. I have a screen where I'm drying some plantain that, uh, and there's some chickweed that needs to be ground up and put in its home. It's also my shipping center. It's not normally my herb drying center, but it was the best place to put that where the cat couldn't get to it. So, uh, and then just storage and I'm not even going to go to the right because it, from here on over, it gets much worse. So we'll go back here. So yes, there we are. Um, that is where I work, where the quote unquote magic happens. Uh, and so I just thought I would share that with you and you can see where my products come from and uh, kind of where I do most of my work. Sometimes, I mean, I have my, you've seen my kitchen in a couple other videos when I'm doing kitchen witchery and uh, we'll get back up there uh, someday too. And, uh, but today I have some fabrics to finish, some fabrics to start and some fabrics to finish because there were some that I did yesterday that I don't like. So we're going to experiment with over dyeing them something different today. And, um, yeah, but thank you for joining me on this little walk through my workspace. We'll catch you later. And I hope, um, if you haven't already subscribed and followed that you will do that right now and share with a friend. And, uh, if you have any requests, because, um, I'm an open book. So if there's anything you've seen that's in my collection that you want to know more or, questions about, I, I do want to do a um, getting to know you introductory vi video here very soon, probably in the next day or two if I have time. And um, I could add on a Q&A if there's any particular questions that you have for me about my practice, my art, my work, um, dog walking, <laughs> uh, um, moving from one state to the other, any of the things that I've done in the last few years that, you know, maybe you're interested in knowing more about, or, you know, just anything about what you've seen, um, or suggestions like, how do I make my hair look better? Cause it always looks like a dog's ass, um, when I'm on these videos. So anyway, thank you so much. We will catch you later and, um, uh, have a beautiful day.